and appreciation in the place where he is working. And he was the finalist for Mahendra Innovation Award for 2016, Tad He handles over 50 branches across Tamil Nadu and a lot more to tell about him. And you'll find it, or, uh, you'll find it yourself when, you, when he starts interacting. Over to you, Dakshin. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, that was uh, indeed a pleasurable uh, introduction. So, okay. So, I think uh, all of you are ready for the session. So, let's move on. So, I'll just introduce myself. Uh, I'm Dakshin. I did my schooling in uh, PSBB, Padma Shashadri Balabhavan, and uh, then I moved on to do my undergraduate at uh, SVC at uh, our civil department. So I passed out in 2016, then moved on to do my master's in human resource. And uh, post which uh, I have joined Mahindra and Mahindra. So right now I'm uh, uh, looking after Tamil Nadu state as a whole. And uh, here I am to present you the session. So I found uh, a lot of uh, other uh, session uh, takers, like they were having topics more related to uh, civil, but mine is nothing related to civil and it is totally away from what you see in books. And mine is something uh, you can't see through books. It's just that you, what you should know before you go to an interview. So that's what it is about. So let's see on. <clears throat> so the three major agendas that I want to cover in this session. So one is, uh, what is the most popular interview myth? So the next is, how do you prepare for an interview? And then what are the possible rounds that you can face? And what are the possible questions that they will ask you in an interview? And how do you answer them? So I hope uh, English is fine to every one of you, or uh, any regional language is also fine. So I think I can continue. Is it fine? You continue yeah. in English. Okay, sure. So the first thing is most popular interview myth. So can uh, any one of you like tell me what is the myth that you have heard about uh, interview? So something like uh, someone can tell you interview na ipurida iru. So like if you face an interview, this is how it's going to be, this is how people are going to talk. So any one of you can unmute and you can share your uh, experience or share your learning. Should come in formals. Okay. <laughs> Anyone? will try you with lots of questions. <laughs> Correct. So I think uh, you both have uh, heard it everywhere. So those are real popular myths. But uh, let me move on. So next is, uh, I'll tell you what are the major popular myths. So anyone can tell you that I can't prepare for an interview. Okay, so which means, uh, for example, if there's an interview tomorrow, They'll tell me, uh, anyone, your friends, anyone, they'll tell you, I can't prepare for an interview tomorrow. That is something which is not true. Actually, you can be prepared for an interview tomorrow and you can do it. And uh, the next is you can never be late. So that is something which I do not accept and it's a, a myth. So you can be late, okay? So I'm not telling in a positive thing. It is not advisable to be late but if the situation like makes you to be late you can well in prayer inform the person in charge that you will be late like 20 minutes 30 minutes before the interview you will know that you are going to be late so you can inform them so that is something that you can do so people will accept if you are late but uh, i'm not saying that is a good practice but just in case next is uh, keep your answers uh, to everything short and sweet so this is something that uh, it's a myth. So it's not necessary that you need to keep your answers. You need to give 
few insights like if someone asks you to do your education you need to tell them you did here and but but you need to give them what kind of institution you were in so even that will actually provide a good image the next one is the most qualified person gets the job which is totally untrue it's not true that the most qualified person gets the job the most uh the, the most prepared person and the most connected person will get the job okay so that we'll see on later slides like how you can prepare and how, how you can connect with the interviewer uh the next is the interviewer will always know if candidates are telling the truth or not so that is a myth you can see in the interview you you will tell the truth okay but that there might be chances where you you cannot tell the truth also that will be a lie but i am 100% sure no one will find out that is one so next is the interview will always know if the candidates okay we have completed them the next is they know i am interested in the job because i am here which is not true people won't know like see people they might uh, come to the interview and they may not be interested for the interview uh, one second one second i think the bell is so yeah hello 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 yes yes yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. the the bell was in my house actually <laughs> so i'll just continue so yes so the, the next myth was you know i am interested in the job because i am here that is also not true so to be honest people like uh, few people might go for a job interested like they will be interested but there are people who will not be interested for the job but uh, due to pressure from uh, uh, so like say parents they will go for the interview and people, and the hr will know that if the person is interested or not next is if i follow after an interview i will just look needy or desperate actually that is not true so for example if a position has three uh, uh shortlisted candidates and uh, if one of them are like following up with the hr or following with the concerned person saying that what is the status and asking how you can do better or uh, checking if there's any vacancies like in other uh, uh verticals so these are things that will let hr to know that you are interested in the job so yes so these were the myths i hope you would have gotten fair idea but later on the slides you i am sure that you will know how to beat this next is how do you prepare for an interview like uh, there are two ways how do you prepare for an interview one is personal friend another is professional friend so these are the simple things see you can open google you can open any book and there will be complicated stuff but i am giving you the easiest things that you need to know so from personal friend there is preparing the resume and grooming that is something that you can do personally so the next is professional friend that is company perspective and interview perspective so first we will look on personal front so first is prepare the resume so uh, this is something that i'll need to concentrate on i hope you all be attentive like first point i would tell you is do not copy your resume from your classmates i have seen many a times that you know similar uh, resumes come across like for example only the name will change other things will be the same so this is something that do not project you as a good uh, good candidate okay next is do not fill in information that you are not aware of so for example you might uh, add uh, 
I have participated in NCC, participated in NSS. So uh, I have been in an interview where a candidate, he did not know that he was a, he knew, he told that he was a part of NSS, but he did not knew the full form of NSS or NCC. So <laughs> when you are uh, in the interview, you must know that <laughs> it's a basic thing. So next is know every word in your resume. Uh, okay, I hope now you can see the PPTs. Yeah, great. Okay, so I'll just take you back from where I left. So, okay, these were the basic things that I actually spoke about, but I think you guys couldn't see the PPT. So, in personal friend, this is uh, this is where I left in the PPT. So the third point is know every word in your resume. So for example, like uh, you are presenting a resume and you put n number of achievements, you put uh, uh, that you participate, you are a project uh, manage, uh, manager for a specific project in your, uh, uh, the place where you did your internship or you did a, specified or classified project somewhere else. So you might apply or put these things, but you must know A to Z about that project. You simply shouldn't put the project, you must know it. So next is, what does an interviewer care? So there are only three major, three or four things that an interview sees in your resume. Education, personal info, achievements, and hobbies. These are four things that you'll see. So I suggest you not to add anything more than this because others are just to fill up spaces, but no one will concentrate on the same. Just concentrate on providing your personal info, education, achievements, and hobbies. So hobbies also don't put the same hobbies, like it's common. I mean, if you are having any hobby, which is, uh, maybe you can add it. So next is, uh you can put one page resume so for example like uh, i have seen resumes which have three four pages but all those things are they're just details or they are full of articles and uh, things like that but one page resume which means that you put your personal info your education and uh, your uh, achievements and obvious uh, any questions I'll uh, take at the end of the session. I think someone has raised their hand. So maybe I'll take your session post completing it. There's a session for questions. Maybe you can raise it over there. So the next is name to be in bold and in a different font. So see, you will be providing your contents, like uh, your personal info, education, achievements. So those will be in a font size, in a particular font size. So if you give the same font size or the font for your name, your name wouldn't be catchy. So you must have a bold and uh, legible and uh, a different font for your name so that the interviewer can recognize. You can even attach your photograph along with your name. So the people will know that Okay, he can relate. See, an HR, you'll see around 15 to 20 people for different uh, positions in the company. So each day he'll be meeting new people. So you can't expect him to uh, remember you. It's the fact. So you need to attach a photograph and something like a name in a different font, which is which will make him recognize that you are the candidate. Then the final point, most importantly, know yourself. So. See, like uh, if you are in an interview and the person asking you, you tell him some, like uh, for example, he ask you tell about yourself. You will tell about you and there will be things which are not similar to what you said in your resume. So that is a major impact actually for you. People will not, or the interviewer will not have a good image. So what you say and what is there in the resume should match. So keep things that, defines you in the resume. Just don't add stuff. The next is grooming. As uh, our friend told that uh, going informals. So it actually depends. See, there are different types of company. 
So, you, for example, you can take my organization, m and and there are other organizations like Zoho. So, if you compare m and and Zoho, there are different products and different services, but it's a conservative company. m and is a conservative company where you come in formalize okay, for an interview, but that's not true for Zoho. You can go in a t-shirt or whatever they like. So, it's that's informal. So, but it's formal in m and so then clean air, groom the beard. See, you can, this is common that everyone will be knowing, but just in case, I'm just, you just need to know. Shoes are compulsory, then you must, the major point is avoid accessories, like chains, bracelet, ring, like flashy items. You will wear a formal, then you'll have a gold chain, you'll have a gold bracelet. So these things, they do not uh, a, provide a good image. So next is professional friend. So we have seen personal friend. Personal friend, we have seen resume, how to prepare a resume and grooming. Now is professional friend. They are company perspective. Uh, see the resume, if there is an achievement or is there any project that is related to the company or you did an internship with the company, uh, you must point it out clearly so that people will know, okay, this guy has been in this company. He has interned here, he has done a project, so he might know the culture. So that will help you. So highlight those points. Then before going for an interview, know about the company. You just don't need to mug up, but you need to know what the company is, what is the service they provide, what is the product they sell. So these are basic things that you need to know. So there are people who go for an interview without knowing this, but that doesn't give a good image. Next is you should not create controversial statements. So, for example, uh, let us take uh, you know CTS. They uh, sacked around uh, six thousand people like, last quarter. So that is something which you should not talk about in the company because he will think that okay, this guy is only concentrating on controversial topics. He's not seeing what the other things the company is doing. So that might not give a good image. Then other uh, things that you should need to know is the MD's name, CEO, their annual profits. Pro profits, you just need to know profit. You don't need to mug up the numbers and all for, for example, knowing their uh, annual uh, returns, their uh, profit before tax, profit after tax. Those things you, know, you need to know. Because as a fresher or uh, as a student who's coming out of UG, people will know that this concentration wouldn't be in those things. So, but knowing it is a good advantage. The next differentiating factor is you need to check on their new products that, that is going to be launched. For example, uh, uh, when you sit in an interview and you talk about new products or their future growth that they, they are not discussed, but it's there on the internet and there are rumors about it. So there, when you talk about it, they'll know that you're interested for the job. So you're showing interest towards the subject or towards the organization. So, okay, they'll have fared, okay, this guy he knows about our products that are going to be launched and he's interested. So you might, you might have a chance to crack that interview. Next is check the uh, company's culture. So like, as I told you, Zoho has a different culture, m and has a different culture, ACS has a different culture. You, you need to talk to their ex-employees or your seniors who are there, your friends who are there. Just talk and get to know how are the people there, what is their expectations. So these might give you an insight of how the company is going to be if you are selected there. So next is interviewer perspective. So this is, I don't think you will see this anywhere because this is something that people do not focus. But uh, as on date, this one is something that will boost your chances to get a job and crack the interview. So like, for example, if you know the interviewer who's going to take your uh, interview, so like you have cracked the aptitude, then you have gone to face-to-face. -face. In face-to-face, -face, you will meet a person, right? Like you'll be taking an interview face-to-face. -face. So in that case, if you know the interviewer's name, it will be an advantage for you. Right, like you will know that uh, you can check this LinkedIn profile, you can check this work, you can check this projects, other achievements. So, if there are any common interests, like 
uh, he might be playing sports, you might be playing sports. So that might be a common sport. So when the interview asks you, uh, like, uh, uh, what are your favorite sports? What do you do? Your hobbies? Maybe you can bring it out. Like I, I even ch uh, checked your profile. It says you played cricket. Then you both can talk about cricket. So these are the interview that you need to guide. So you will anchor the interview. You won't let the interviewer ask questions. It will be a discussion. So when you control the interview and make a discussion, surely you will get the job. There's no doubt. So next we'll move on to what are the possible interview rounds and how do you crack them? So round one, majorly in the most companies that they do is aptitude because they know that when an engineering student is applying, definitely there'll be another 500 applying for the same job. So the first round will be like, how do you reduce the mass into a simpler number? First, they will give you aptitude. So in aptitude, you have many, uh, many subjects like, see, these are the major subjects that I have presented in the slide, but there are many subjects that are uh, very evident in aptitude. So I have mentioned only major ones. So if you like understand the concepts and if you can, I think you can uh, screenshot this page. These are the major concepts that will re are repeatedly asked in every uh, aptitude round. So maybe you can focus on these topics first. So this will give you, definitely give you an 80 plus percentage ad advantage. But I'm not saying that do not skip other topics, but these are the main ones. So next is, what is the solution? How do you crack aptitude? So there's nothing, nothing rocket science for here. Just you need to understand the concept. See, I have seen people if you say the interview is tomorrow or day after, they will start mugging up the questions and the sums. They will even mug up the numbers also. So that is something that you shouldn't do if you want to crack aptitude. So first you need to understand the concept. Let it be any train sum or any boat, stream, river, those kind of sums, they are repetitive in nature, but you need to understand the concept. So once you understand the concept only, you will be able to do any sum which is asked in that particular topic. So even you can start today, you can start today in understanding those concepts. If you do one concept, surely you can really crack aptitude. Next is you can take mock test. There are available in uh, Google. You just need to type them and you can get a mock test. Just you can like say, for example, you can take a 20 minute mock test once in four days. So in that day, you'll know which are the questions you, you couldn't answer. So the next three days in the week, you can work on uh, doing your uh, understanding the concepts. So once you know the concepts again, you can take another mock test. So this will help you. So mastering aptitude is only you, you need to practice and only you can master it. Over two days, if I sit and study, I will get good scores and aptitude. It's, it's a myth you can't get. <clears throat> Next is round two, group discussion. So now that the mass, from the mass, there will be a definite number which would have come to the round two. Then what would companies think that we'll keep a group discussion? So there are a few criteria that they see in group discussion. So I'll explain that to you. The first, I'll tell you the do and the don'ts. Then, you, then I will tell you the solution to crack it. First is the do's. First, listen to the topic carefully. If uh, usually there'll be topics related to current affairs, just more than listen to the topic. Like if the uh, HR or any other guy is giving you the topic, listen to it carefully. Then any GD will have uh, a two minute of time to put down your thoughts. So you can write it down, anything relevant. Not exactly you should be to the point, anything relevant around the topic also, you can write it down and keep it ready. So initiate the discussion if you are well aware of the topic. So this is something that uh, will uh, provide a good picture. First is, if you know the topic very well, if you have jotted down all the points and you know this point is a very good point, initiate the discussion with that point. Like since you are the first person to initiate the discussion, have around like, like a, a 40 seconds, 50 seconds speech. So that everyone knows that, okay, these guys know the topic that he has started also. So he'll know. 
So people will have an they'll have an idea. Okay, this guy can do it. So things like that. So there you will score in that. Next is the other case. What if I don't know the topic? Nothing wrong in that. Listen to others. If you don't know the subject, also listen and then contribute anything relevant. When you are listening, also you can note down the points and you can think, okay, if there is anything that I can relate to this topic. Okay, this guy told this, if I can relate this. So these things you can add. So this will help you actually. The next is you can support your points with some facts and figures. See, uh, you can support, if you know facts and figures, you can provide them. But let it be correct or to approx. Don't just provide facts and figures because you know you have some idea. You should, you should be approx to the point. Even not correct, approx to the point will do it. But don't give random numbers. Next is, uh, next is make short contribution of three, four times in a week. Nothing, you see. Okay, you didn't start the discussion. Someone started. Okay, then how do you make your present? Make short contributions. Three, four times if you give in a, a point here and there. Like, uh, it doesn't need to be a valid point or a point that can score 100. But let it be a point that can score 60 or 70 also. So three, four times when you scored it, people know, okay, this guy, you know something. So they will have an understanding. Next is speak politely and pleasantly respect contribution from other members. This is something people will watch. The, the HR over there or the person interviewing over there, you wouldn't see or how strong is this guy in this topic. He will check if this guy knows the topic or not. Uh, if this guy can bring in some efforts or bring in some value to the topic. If the guy is talking clearly, is he communicating properly? Is he polite? Is he pleasant? These are things that people see. Okay, another thing is, I didn't know anything about the topic. I have no clue of the topic. Okay, nothing. You don't need to contribute also. Final thing is, just note down the points that everyone, everyone spoke. Just make a note of all those points, write it down. Then finally, summarize it. So you can say by starting, uh, uh, Mr. Ray, this guy started this session and it's so on. When, so summarize and bring it to a conclusion or you can summarize the topic. So here in this situation, you didn't know anything, but you made your presence by summarizing it. So this is an advantage. If you don't know the any relevancy or any topic related to it, you can summarize and you can make some scores. Rather going zero, you can make a score. This is an advantage. Next is don'ts. So these things you shouldn't do in a GD. You, know, you will right away get disqualified. So just you shouldn't door speak, intervene, snatch others' chance to speak. So this is a case when when a, a person who knows the topic, he'll try to dominate, he'll try to over speak, intervene, he'll try to like put all of his points in one GD. So that is something that I don't recommend and that, that is something that's not good to do also in a GD. Don't argue, don't shout. Even if the person is, uh, even if he's, even if he's blabbering, don't shout or argue. Just accept it and you put on your points. Don't create debates. That is something that people see. GD people mostly tend to take it to a debate, thinking that I'll talk for this, you talk for that. But anyone can sense that it's it's not a GD and it's a debate and everyone will not get a point. Next is talk talking irrelevant things and distraction, distract the discussion. These are common things. And next is something people see justice, what what you make, like posing negative justice. See, for that's a psychologic saying that uh, if you lean towards a conversation, it means that you're interested in the conversation. If you lean back, and be relaxed in your chair, it means you're not interested in the discussion. Okay, so these are negative uh, negative feelings that just is that people can see. So they will make a note of it. So next is do not dominate, mentioning erratic statistics. Then put others in an embarrassing situation by asking them to speak if they don't want to. So say for example, there are eight people in a GD and one person, he, do, he doesn't want to be in the GD because he doesn't know the topic or some other reason. 
So since you are taking the lead or your uh, the discussion is going in a smooth manner, uh, you shouldn't ask a person who's not willing to talk. So that is not something that you do in a GD. Then this next is solution to how you crack a GD. So there's nothing difficult in cracking a GD. It's the most simplest thing. Major topics in GD would relate current affairs. See, for, if I'm going for a GD tomorrow, they will ask about COVID. What is COVID and what are their uh, economic factors that affect the uh, Indian economy? These are the things they will ask. So you just need to prepare. Current affairs is nothing difficult to prepare. You, you have apps like InShots, Economic Times, and all you have. Just download it, go through it. Every day there are like five, six major topics that come in InShots and Economic Times. Just go through it every day. Don't mug up. Just go through it and know what's happening. That is enough. And next is, do not panic if you don't know the topic. So more, most of the people that are in the GD, they panic. Even if they know the topic, they panic, thinking what to speak. But you need not panic. You just, you need a couple of mock GDs that you need to take within your group so that those anxieties will get reduced. Next is, as I told you, no one is checking your strength about the topic or how good or how good is your English. No one is checking that. People are seeing, like, as an HR perspective, people see if this guy can talk, if he can communicate, if he can bring in team work within the team, if he can uh, allow others to talk, if he is accepting others' points, or is he, is he only throwing his points. So they will, these are the points that people check. It's not that you should be good in the topic, but that must be some content to talk. Then only they'll judge you. Next is the best role. Take the role of a leader or orator. See, in GDs, the major conflict is if, once if you take the role of a leader or orator, you are chosen. There's no doubt they will select you in the GD because taking a position as a leader or orator in a GD is the most difficult part. But uh, that comes only with experience. You can't just like that, okay, today I'm taking the lead of a GD. You can't do that. You need to, you need proper experience. You need to sit like five, six GDs already, and you must have a different opinions, different people's, different interaction. Then only you can, you can take the role of a leader. So with experience, you will definitely will know how to take the role. So next is round three face to face. So there are four major, so there are many types, but major criteria fall under these four types. Personality, stress, situational behavior. Personality is nothing but how you respond, how, how, how are you as a person, how do you, what are your uh, thoughts, what are your uh, values. So these things people check. Next is stress. People think that uh, cracking a stress interview is very difficult. No one can do it. Nothing like that. It is the most easiest thing. Just you need to work around it. It's just situational. They provide with you with a situation, they, and then they ask you to give a solution for it. See, uh, situational interview is nothing that you can practice. It is something that comes out of experience. Once you sit in two, three interviews, you'll know how they will ask situational questions. How do you tend to respond? You can ask about your, you can ask your seniors, or the past or people, and uh, you can ask your friends how they handle situations in their uh, company. What are the situations they face? Ask. I get to know how do you face them. Next is behavioral interview. Uh, this is something that is correlated with situation. How you behave, how how your response is. They check how your response is connected to your behavior. Are you uh, are you a teamwork guy? Are you individual perspective guy? Do you comply or are you non-comply? So these things are seen through behavioral interviews. The next is types of interview questions. So there are many questions that they'll ask you in an interview. All all questions fall under these five categories. So if you know how to answer for these five categories, you can answer any question that is asked in an interview. Let us see. The first one is classic interview questions. Something like, tell me about yourself. Everyone will 
get a chance to answer to this question in any interview because it's a very common question. Next is what are your weakness strength? Why did you apply for this question? These questions indefinitely they'll be asked. So be prepared. The solution is nothing but these questions can be prepared well before the interview. You clearly know, right? These questions are going to be asked. So you can for that you can easily prepare. You can Google it, you can write on your own, you can bring in new words, get on to vocabulary and dictionary. You can do whatever sauce you want. It's easy. You just need to prepare. Weakness can be tricky, but you can dodge it. See, uh, people uh, in an interview, they ask, what is your weakness? So right away, don't go, go and tell them that uh, I am a slow learner. Uh, it takes time for me to do activity. So if you tell that, it will provide a bad image. Okay. They might be a quality of you, but you should not tell it out. You should not let things out. Okay. So for that, you can tell, you can make it more comical or take it in a path that, okay, a jovial kind of uh, an answer. So what is your weakness? No, like you can tell, okay, like the, Last week, uh, I was on a diet. My friend uh, got me chocolates. I couldn't resist. I had the chocolate. So chocolate is my weakness. So these are answers that are jovial in nature and you can break it. So you know, okay, this guy knows how to answer. So asking this question is useless to him. Here you can crack it. Next is if they ask for strength, don't use the same jovial response. Strength, you give it professionally. Like saying that uh, I can finish uh, my deliverables within deadlines, things like that. Don't say I can resist to a chocolate. That will not fetch you marks in this. It should be a bit professional. So next is career goal interview. So this is very common. Even you can prepare for these questions. Like uh, why do you want to work at this company? Where do you want to be in five years? What's your dream job? What motivates you? So even these questions you can prepare, but this can't be prepared well in advance. Once you know that, okay, this company is coming for an interview. Once you know the company, then you can start preparing these questions. It's very easy. You can tell like, for example, why do you want to at this company? If uh, TCS guy asks you, you can tell him, yes, uh, TCS is known for CSR activity and uh, it is a larger, largest uh, salary providing for her. Uh, it has the largest number of salaried people, anything you can tell. So these are something that you can prepare well in advance. You, you need not wait till the date of interview. So others are same. You just need to align your answers according to the organization. Next is character and competency questions. So these are something which you can prepare, but uh, this will involve more of you need experience or you need like people who have already been in that situation who are uh, uh, already uh, are working and they know what answer you can give so that you will get a job so what are the core what are the core values these are things that will define you like for example in a resume there are things that will define you. so if your your core values see it's easy to give core values looking from google but you must support those answers with examples. Then only the people will uh, believe you. So what is that core value? If you tell I'm, I'm determined to do any work, that is not a value. How do you how do you provide with example is what they see. So same thing, who do you admire and why? Tell me about a time you dealt with a dif difficult person. When were you last angry and why? So competency also is the same. Something, a time about work, you missed a deadline a big chance you had to dealt with. So things like this, but these can be actually answered easily. There's an approach called star approach. There are n number of approaches, but this one thing actually works. So your star is nothing but situation, task, action, and result. For any of the questions asked in these slides, you can use star approach. So is, there'll be a deadline, uh, there'll be an activity that you missed the deadline. So you can tell the situation. So so and so happened. So and so was the situation, and you can tell the task. Uh, the task was you can tell there was a COVID uh, pan pandemic outbreak in my uh, uh, region, and it was uh, in the contamination zone. You can tell the that was the task, 
and you had to uh, recruit, uh, say, 10, 15 people, what was the action you did? You can tell I uh, sourced people through social media. I did. What was the action that you did? The actual action that you did? You can tell that. Then what was the result? So if you compile your answers in these in this format for all the questions asked in character or competency question, definitely the interviewer will be satisfied the answer you gave because you are giving an example. It's an evident example that you gave. Maybe it can be true or not, but that's an example and you have a higher chance of getting the job. Next is curveball and creativity questions. So these, these types of questions do not have a fixed answer. So for example, if you were an animal, what would you be? Every CV has a lie on it. What's yours? Sell me this pen. These are commonly known. Okay. So here the solution is not like if you, you can, if you are logical and analytical, they'll give you the job. It's wrong. You should be creative. These questions are purposefully asked to test your creativity. You can't be logical. So for the first question, if you are an animal, what would you be? You can't say telling like uh, I would be a monkey because my ancestors uh, came from it. Uh, you, if you tell that, you'll think, okay, this guy is not creative. It's only logical. The logical answer anyone can give you, but creative answer is subjective. It depends on you. So how creative you answer matters for these questions. So what is the interview perspective and what he wants to know about you in an interview? face-to-face -face interview. These are the six components that he actually checks. Okay, if this guy can communicate, if this guy, if this guy can be a leader in the future role that he's gonna take, can he communicate with people? Can he build relationships within the company? Can he solve problems? Is he flexible? Is he creative? These six things are what people want to know about you. So if you can answer all these questions, I'm sure you'll be hired, there's no issues. So that's been my time. Thank you guys Thank you for the session. Is there any question that you guys would like to ask? Hi, Dakshin. This is Ashwat here. Hi, Ashwat. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, you're audible. How are you? How are things? Uh, all good. Uh, Okay, this is uh, Ashwar. He is an uh, HR at uh, Elin Construction. So he's a good friend of mine. He just wanted to be a part of the session and just wanted to know stuff from the session. Yes, Ashwar, go on. Yeah, so good evening, everybody, all uh, students and the faculty over here, which is present. Uh, so, Dakshin, I have a few questions, even though I'm on your HR field. But still, there are few challenges which even now I am facing and even I don't have an answer for that professionally. So see, uh, I would like to take my own example uh, that uh, I, when sorry. I had come... Ashok, sorry to interrupt. Can you uh, switch off your video because there's a lag in video audio. Your audio is clear. Sure. Yes, is it okay now? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the question was... Uh, you very well know I sat uh, with you for Mahendra interview and I was not selected in the, my second round, my group discussion. So post that I went to the interviewer and I asked him, sir, what made you to reject me? So this was the question I asked him so that I can build my, so why I can, I can make my negatives into the positives for the next interview. So that was my perspective and I went and approached him. So that time he told me your family background was too strong to take you in. So for like for my family background is we are well settled and uh, any new in any new person who comes and asks me he, he would generally say that you don't need a job why do you why do you even have to work but uh, when it comes to real life we people want to like you know stand in our own thing and we want to build up our own career than thinking of what dad and mom parents have so that time when in the interview when they talk about the personal questions right which we already which we which we like mentioned there so that time you you will just openly you have to you have to tell the truth who are you and what is your family background right. so at right. that time this this basically this half an hour or 40 minutes of the interview time when we express our own things the, the interviewer goes up with the intuition and 
he takes up an intuition saying that okay this guy might be suitable he cannot come to a conclusion saying this guy is suitable he will take it as per his intuition totally definitely but when it comes to this personal personal bio of yours and rejecting someone just because his personal bio is very strong so how to make that interviewer accept or agree that this guy is actually wanted to work actually want his build his career in his own lane how to make him or understand him that this is why you are here okay <clears throat> okay this question is something that uh, you wanted to know but uh, yeah uh, answering this question it's something like you know uh, an interviewer he will he will have a definite past like uh, for uh, example in your case your interviewer he had around like 17 years of previous experience in different organizations so there he would have seen people you no know, people who have come from a background like yours may not may may have not continued in the organization for a quite a long period okay and he he was he might be uh, might be biased because not everyone would have the same outcome like you wanted you wanted something for yourself but not everyone would have been the same and that is something the interviewer will not think he will generalize he is also seeing people for for the same position he actually saw around 16 to 18 people and he would generalize in his own category so your biases will come but it depends on the past of the interviewer that is what i want to tell you okay okay i get it so it was it is totally you can you can tell it as it is it is your luck is it correct correct to which interview is interviewing is up to your luck yeah i i get it i get it okay any questions from the students so here hello dakshin sir Yes, yes. Uh, can I know your name? Yeah, my name is Richard John. I'm in third. I'm studying in third year in SVC in civil department. Great, great. Go on, go on, Richard. Uh, so you told like uh, we have uh, if uh, if a HR or someone interviewer asks us about our weakness, uh, could, uh, like uh, it wouldn't be like uh, too much honest. Like uh, I'm lazy. Or something. So how do you want it? I mean, uh, how should we? Uh, how should be? Uh, how should we answer the question? Uh, no, like I already gave an example. Uh, so, for example, if he asks you for a weakness, like like I said, you can say that I was in a diet, in a strict diet to reduce my weight. But my friend he got me a chocolate, and I couldn't resist, and I had the chocolate. so your resistance to your uh, to chocolate is my weakness so i was in a strict diet but i couldn't maintain it because of the chocolate so this is a weakness actually right if you are on a diet you shouldn't have chocolate since you had it's a weakness right you are a foodie so you couldn't control it so th these are jovial things that you need to say so you can you can tell him that you are lazy okay but that will not give you a good picture and i would recommend you to not tell that you are lazy so anyone who joins the job out of experience i'm telling you they will work even though they are lazy they will work the work will also be be brought out from you from your manager so there is no way you can be lazy at work also so that's a different perspective maybe once you join an organization you will know but right now i'll tell you answering it too modestly won't fetch you a job okay okay thank you Great. Anyone else? Um, and Dakshin bro, again another one question from my side. Richin. Go on, go on. Uh, even in this government sectors too, do we have any all the uh, these kind of interviews or only mostly in private in sector? sector? Do we have? Uh, do we have no, uh, these interviews like face to face interviews and all these things like uh, yes, even but... in government sectors or only in uh, Private definitely sectors. you have face to face interview uh, which are more 
tough comparatively to a private organization because in a government uh, uh, in a government facility you will have an entrance exam so once if you want to join as a hr or as an uh, civil engineer as an ae uh, if you want to join or a junior engineer here the thing is there will be face to face interview okay there might not be an hr for the company but the manager will take in question the manager that you report to so he will ask you a question so those questions will be technical they won't be like generic so mostly it will be career oriented or technical you cannot uh, expect creative questions from him so you will have to understand the culture so before attending the interview you must know the culture from where the person is from so government is a conservative com- conservative organization so you know uh, you know our government they are conservative and people are from a different background not not from a high five background so people mostly in government to start their career, career with and uh, to be honest they are not high five people okay so you can't expect a zo type of uh, uh, feel over there there will be cons- conservative you need to be formal uh, you need to even even few people they salute okay it, it might it might not be common nowadays but it happens so you need to understand the culture and then you you must proceed there will be face to face interview definitely but the manager will take it okay okay so thank you and another one question yeah um so of like uh, the mask of a career would be like a resume right so Sorry? how should all of the our resume our resume will be the a uh, mask of a career right i mean the educational qualifications or everything else so yes. what all should be highlighted in the resume and how should it be more presented uh, good how can i present my resume more better okay see uh, here i'll i'll take the example of my case uh, my resume i had nothing to do with academically let it be civil or hr my academically performance was not that great okay uh, let me not take hr because it's totally different in uh, scc i was not ac- uh, academically good i was more into sports okay so uh, i played for the basketball team and i was a state player for tamil nadu so my resume consisted more of achievements from my sport sport perspective so during that time i didn't know how to do a resume okay no one was there to help me out on how to fetch a resume uh, so it was a difficult task but there i put more of my sports so you know like there are people there are interviewers who, who will connect with sport because uh, my interviewer who took uh, me in the job was a sports person Uh, so he could connect with me so there i created a connect uh, and nowadays most of the interviewers uh, let's be frank are fitness freaks they think they are fitness freaks they might be they might not so they will connect you on the grounds of fitness any day so you need to check if you know the interviewer it's well and good you can check his linkedin profile you can check his interest you can check your common interest with him and maybe that will surely help you okay okay sir thank yeah. you thank you great there are few questions in the chat box dakshin uh okay one second i need to see the chat box okay anis uh, finally a student has asked uh, what to say and what not to say in uh, when they are asking about personal introduction okay personal introduction uh, first of all they know your name okay like uh, they'll be like uh, for example if anis is coming to interview i anis please take your seat they know your name they know your college everything is fine when they ask to tell about yourself don't tell sir i am anis that's the wrong way to start it's like a, a fixed procedure don't do that it is all changed now you start with sir uh, i i hope you know my name uh, from the resume uh, and uh, i did my schooling you can go from your schooling go to your uh, uh, ug 
then you can uh, uh, pitch in your achievements if possible uh, then you can bring in your uh, hobbies so that is the best way to start your uh, session your interview session if if a interview ask you tell me about yourself it is good that he asked you that question so uh, you can take you can steer that interview session by what you want like for example if he asked me about if an interview is asking me about my uh, uh, is asking tell me about yourself so i would tell him i am dakshin so and so then i would take him to basketball it's because i know about basketball and it's my sport and there are many achievements that i have done so i would take him into basketball and i would give him the experience that i went through basketball so you would ask me is there any situation that you faced in or stuff in basketball i would tell him my situations that i faced so the session would be related to basketball it is something that i know right so i will be able to answer him easily and even he will get the answer out from me you know if this guy is communicating or if the, if this guy is lying or uh, uh, is he telling to just steer the interview he'll know once you give the honest answer he'll know it i hope i answered your question anish sorry question anish yeah thank you and next uh, from lalit what are the things which we should do before an hour uh, before the interview before an hour yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay nothing uh, and the name is student name from first year okay before an hour lalit okay lalit there is nothing that you can do before an hour you can just wait for your uh, round to come and uh, just you can google stuff about the company just just be free and relaxed you don't have to prepare one hour before the interview there will be two days three days before the interview that is when we should prepare last one hour you can be relaxed okay thank you dakshin we'll uh, stop with the question answer section and okay. i would like to have a small uh, polling session so participants please uh, participate in the poll Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, now I request uh, Ms. Arshia from first year to uh, give her feedback and uh, present the word of thanks. Good evening, all. Hello. Am I audible, ma'am? Continue. Hello. Hey, ma'am. Uh, good evening, all. I, on behalf of the civil department, extend a hearty vote of thanks to Mr. Dakshin Kailash sir for gracing your important works and sharing with us your findings and your opinions about the interview, sir. I should also thank our faculty for arranging this uh, webinar because actually this is the first time they have initiated alumni lectures, which is very helpful for us during this lockdown. Um, being a civil engineering student, I personally found this alumni interaction to be very useful for us because. 
course sir you have given a very good idea about phasing the future interviews uh, because phasing interview is the crucial part in an engineer's life i thank you sir for uh, giving an uh, excellent coverage to topics like how to crack gd and types of interviews and so on this gave us a uh, courage to face the interviews in future i thank you sir we are all inspired by your words and uh, great to have you here thank you thank you thank you ashriya and uh, i think there are time constraints maybe i could have uh, added a few perspectives from mr ashwat as well and uh, thanks for the time and i would like to thank uh, ruby ma'am for uh, arranging this session and uh, bringing bringing an alumni back so it was definitely a good experience for me to give back to where i came from and uh, i would like to thank the department of civil engineering so any doubts or any queries you can connect me over linkedin so you can connect with mr ashwat nyanavel as well he is also available on linkedin he is from lnt hr so he that can provide you with more info so thanks a lot team thanks for being patient and uh, i would like to thank mr dakshin and for uh, like whatever you whenever you approach him for any kind of interaction from the institution he is really happy to help with and a special thanks for that thank you the section thanks a lot sir thank you sir yeah and thank you and uh, thank you ashwat uh, mr ashwat also yeah i hope we'll uh, get to know more and we can interact for uh, future uh, uh, endeavors also thank you so much sure sure thank you sure sure thank you Thank you.